Hi guys, my name is Mark Hartnady. I'm one of the full-time students here at the GSB this year. Uh, the school has come to myself and Craig, who you'll meet later, to ask us to put together a short video tutorial to cover the basic fundamentals of what you've gone through already in the class, just to help you prepare uh, for your exam, which is coming up shortly. So we split this into two sessions. I'm going to cover uh, the basics of finance, so what finance is, how it differs from accounting, the different types of finance that there are, and then I'll go into some more details uh, such as uh, pro forma, uh, building a pro forma balance sheet and income statement for an organization, how to manage the growth of that organization, how to determine the external funding needs that that organization will have as they grow. Uh, I'll look at the internal uh, uh, growth rate, the sustainable growth rate, and then if there's time at the end, I'll go through the Clarkson case, which you would have done in class, which is, which is really a good uh, summary of all of those concepts uh, put together. Okay, so I think the best way to start out is to really cover the fundamental difference between accounting and finance. I like to think of it in terms of the following. When we think about accounting, we're looking backwards in time. So what we're concerned with is what is already being recorded in the books of a business. Whereas with finance, what we're concerned with is the future. So how do we grow our business? How do we buy more assets? Or how do we manage those assets more efficiently? So coming back to our accounting identity, which you would have learnt in your accounting course, the assets in your organization that you use to generate cash can be funded either through equity or through liabilities. Now, for this part of the course, what's really important to understand is that there are two types of equity. Okay? You've got your shareholder funds, so that's the money that you as an owner of the business will put into that business. And then you've got what's called retained earnings. So remember, retained earnings is the profit that you have at the end of the year after tax, after interest, so the net profit after tax, less the dividends that you'll pay to the shareholders of that organization. So essentially what we've got is three types of, of financing for the assets in the business. We've got our shareholder funds, our retained earnings, and our liabilities or debt. So remember debt is uh, going to the bank and asking for money, going to mom and pop, uh, and asking for money that you will then pay interest on in order to keep the fair exchange between the financer and your business interesting. Okay, so the next concept I want to cover is what we call pro forma financials. Now, a pro forma financial is simply the anticipation of what we expect our financial statements to look like in the next financial period, or in the next month, or in the next 10 years, whatever the need may be. Now, the reason we use pro forma financial statements is simply to gauge an understanding of what the funding requirements of that business are to grow the asset base in order to achieve sales targets. So to give you a very simple explanation, imagine you have 100 Rand of assets, and in the year, that 100 Rand of assets generated 40 Rand in sales. So let's say you've got a 100 Rand pizza oven, and you generated 40 Rand of sales of pizza with that pizza oven. Okay. Now next year, you don't want to have 40 Rand in sales anymore, you want to have 44 Rand in sales. So you want to increase your sales by 10%. Now, ceteris paribus, assuming all things remain equal, we can assume that to move our sales up 10%, we also need to expand our asset base by 10%. Um, that's a very simple explanation, but it's also a very fundamental explanation. Now, how do we do that? So going back to our accounting identity, assets equals equity and liabilities. If our assets are 100 Rand, and we need to get that asset to 110 Rand, okay, so we're moving sales from 40 to 44, and we're assuming that our asset base to accommodate, accommodate that need needs to also increase 10%, then our 100 Rand in assets needs to climb to 110 Rand in assets, 10% increase. Where is that 10 Rand going to come from? It's going to be coming from either equity or liabilities, equity and debt. So we have, again, three ways to source that 10 Rand. Shareholder funds as a form of equity, our organic retained earnings as a form of equity, or debt. We need 10 Rand. We can get 3 Rand from here, 3 Rand from here, or 3 Rand from here. We can get one rand from here, nine rand from here, and nothing from there. There's a whole host of different ways that we can fund uh, the growth potential or the growth requirements that our organization needs. But that is fundamentally the core concept that you need to understand. If we want to grow, our asset base needs to grow. That needs, 
be funded from somewhere, and we have various means of doing that. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a very simple example. Let's say that you have a pizza business. This is the Paul Morn uh, famous pizza business we're going to use again in our finance course. Um, and we, we opened a company this year uh, in 2011. And we bought a pizza oven that cost us 100 grand. And that pizza oven of 100 grand was financed through 50 rand in equity. That's 50 rand in money that I, as an owner of the business, put in. And 50 rand of debt. So we took a loan out from the bank. And our equity and liabilities comes to 100 rand, which we use to finance our pizza oven. Now, during the course of the year, let's say for argument's sake, that we produce sales of 40 rand. Now, I'm not going to build up anything very complicated here. I'm just going to say that the cost of those sales, the cost of goods sold, was 30 rand. So let's assume that there's no administrative cost. We're not paying any salaries. We just sold 40, 40 rand of pizza, and it cost us 30 rand to sell that pizza. So that gives us a profit before interest and tax uh, so, yeah, profit before interest of tax of 10 Rand. Now, remember that we've taken out a loan here of 50 Rand, and we need to pay interest on that loan. So, for argument's sake, let's say the interest was 10%. So, I'm going to say my interest charge, interest charge, was 10% of that, which is 5. And that gives us a profit before tax of 5. And then, let's say for argument's sake, our taxation is uh, 20%. So our tax on the profit before tax is 20% of 5, which is 1. And we're left with a net profit after tax of 4. Now, the end of the year comes, and it's now 2012, and we want to grow our business by, let's say, 5%. Um, I'm going to get to growth a bit later, but for argument's sake, let's just say next year we don't want uh, 40 uh, Rand in sales, but we want 40 Rand and 5 plus 5 percent, whatever that is, 42. So to get 42 Rand in sales, I'm going to have to grow my asset base by 5 percent as well. So very simply, to say in 2012, if I want 42 Rand in sales, I'm going to need 105 Rand in assets. Now we start to see the problem. We've got 105 Rand in assets. But in our business, we still only have 50 rand in equity and 50 rand in liabilities. So we can see that our accounting identity doesn't balance. What does that mean? That means that if we want to grow our asset base by five, we need to finance that either through equity or liabilities or through our retained earnings. Now, assuming that we're not paying any dividends out at this stage, we can assume then that the net profit after tax, that 4 Rand, is going to be available at our disposal to reinvest into the business to grow that asset base. But even if we took that whole 4 Rand, it's not enough to bring our asset base up to 105 Rand. We still need one more Rand. Now where is that Rand going to come from? We've already expired all our retained earnings, so what's left? We've got new shareholder funds, remember? Or we've got debt. So we can either take uh, take on one round of debt here, or I as an owner of the business can put in another round. So I'm going to say that's what I'm going to do in this case. So I'm going to put in one round, I'm going to take this four, and that's going to give me my 55, which is required to balance that equation. And that's really fundamentally what uh, this entire course in fact comes down to. Um, 